Hi everyone, you probably built some sort of chatbot with a modern language model like GPT-4 or Llama. But instead of your customers loving it, they write angry mails or even make the chatbot offer them free coupon codes. Alright, speaking about coupon codes, you will find a coupon code for my Udemy courses in the description of this video. There you will learn everything that we discuss in this video. So when the chatbot does not behave as expected, some people blame it on the model for being stupid or even blame frameworks like Langchain for being trash since they do not offer sophisticated chatbots out of the box. Others introduce every advanced technique that is out there, but pass complete websites with HTML text to the model to create an answer. In this video, I will create a tier list of different LLM-focused techniques and technologies which are required to build great chatbots. Please comment on what you agree on and what you might see different. Before we start with the tier list, a little recap about modern chatbots which make use of RAG. So what's behind that? So RAG is short for Retrieve Log Manager Generation, but before we can actually perform RAG, we first have to ingest the data into a so-called vector store. So we've got some raw data and then we load the data into memory. We split the data and store it together with embeddings, which are numerical values representing the semantic meaning of documents together with the raw documents in the vector store. And after that, a user can ask a question. That question gets embedded to by an embedding model. We make a similarity search against the vector store, retrieve the most relevant documents from the vector store and pass everything like the history and the question together with the documents to the LLM, which will create a final answer for the user. Okay, so let's start with raw data. This is the foundational content that you put into your vector store for later use. That can include a wide range of sources like CSV files, PDFs, websites, databases, providing different materials for information retrieval. This is the essential part of your chatbot. If your raw data is trash, then your chatbot will actually also be trash. Does not depend on the chat model, on the embedding model or the vector stores or any fancy technique. In my opinion, totally underrated because chat models LLMs are cooler, but raw data is the king. Raw data is absolute S tier. Okay, now let's go to chunking methods. So we are still in the ingestion phase. Chunking involves breaking down large documents into smaller, manageable pieces. That's crucial for ensuring that the model can process and retrieve relevant information efficiently. So modern frameworks offer text chunkers like text splitters out of the box. The issue is that they struggle to create chunks that capture the semantic meaning of text. Either there's too much content in a chunk or it is not enough to actually answer a question. It even gets harder when your raw data contains images or tables. I had a great, really great performance boost in my application when using an LLM to create meaningful chunks. So in my opinion, also an often overlooked topic, so really, really important, but in my opinion, not S tier, it's not as important as raw data, but I would put it in A tier. Okay, so the next topic is embedding models. An embedding model converts text into vectors representing the semantic meaning of the content. The quality of the embeddings directly impacts how well the system can understand and retrieve relevant information. I tried open source models and also the second and third generation models of OpenAI and I had best results with the new models from OpenAI. In my opinion, embedding models are often underrated and neglected. So in my opinion, embedding models belong either in B or A tier. I would put it for now in B tier. Okay, now let's have a look at vector stores. So what is a vector store? A vector store is a system designed to store and retrieve vector representations and documents efficiently. So the concept is actually quite simple. You have a user query embedded with an embedding model and pull out the most relevant documents from the vector store. You will find that by a metric like cosine similarity. You will find many, many discussions about Pinecone versus Fice, PG Vector, ChromaDB, actually quite emotionally. So some databases are faster than others and some can handle more documents. I've read an article where someone stated that PG Vector is trash because it's too slow if the size of documents grow and that he stores millions of documents. So, okay, good luck getting out the top five chunks with cosine similarity over multiple millions of vectors. Embeddings don't just scale that well. So in my opinion, just pick one and learn how to use it, but don't overthink it. The performance issue can also be rather neglected since compared to the inference time of modern LLMs, vector stores are lightning fast. So saving five milliseconds and lose 10 seconds with an extra LLM call is not worth it. Okay, so regarding the tier list, I would put a vector store in tier C. It doesn't really matter what vector store you use. You could even use an in-memory store. The metrics are quite easy to calculate. 
So it's nothing really magical and something to discuss emotionally about. So I put it in C tier. Okay, the next topic is the chat model. The chat model is the core engine that generates responses in a conversation. Its performance is critical as it needs to not only understand the query, but also integrate retrieved information to deliver coherent and contextually appropriate replies. If you ever tried some older open source model and check that behavior against state-of-the-art models like GPT-40, you can see the influence is absolutely massive. They write better answers, understand prompts better, are better in extracting certain entities. So switching to a more capable model improves the chatbot a lot. So chat model is in my opinion, absolute S tier. Okay, now let's have a look at LLM based routing. Sometimes normal rec does not perform that well if data is not suited for rec. A good example for that is if you've got tabular data, since LLMs work very good with text data, but struggle to understand Uh, data like tables or work with numbers. Routing involves directing user queries to a more suitable system. One approach is that you let an LLM write SQL and then use the output of the LLM to query the database, which might work better with tabular data. But to be honest, my experience not, was not too pleasant with this. General queries were often wrong, especially when use cases are more complex. So in my opinion, LLM-based routing belongs in D tier. A better way to work with data that is not stored in a vector store is tool calling. Tool calling integrates external tools or APIs to extend the chatbot's knowledge beyond REC. So you can also get real-time information. You bind tools to the LLM. The LLM makes suggestions which tool to use and what arguments to pass. And then you pass the arguments to the function that the LLM suggested. Everything is up to you. So you can use it to interact with APIs, query your database directly, or whatever you want. So quite effective, much better than using LLM-based routing with SQL query generation. But tool calling alone will not create a great chatbot. But tool calling is of course still very, very useful for many applications and belongs in every toolkit of a modern AI developer that works with LLMs. So in my opinion, tool calling belongs in B tier. Okay, the next technique we're gonna have a look at is multi-query retrieval. You have one query by the user and you let an LLM generate five similar queries and query the vector store five times. So you will get more documents and probably get better output. But in my opinion, it's quite overrated. It's an extra LLM call and I often ended up with the exact same five documents. So for me, it's a quite unnecessary D tier technique. Okay, the next part is prompt engineering. You probably heard about that. Crafting prompts is like an art that guides the model's response to what desired outcomes. Effective prompt engineering can significantly enhance the quality of responses by providing clear and precise instructions to the model. There exist many, many techniques to write great prompts and there are even complete courses. So good models behave a lot different when the prompt is changed. You probably want the LLM not to talk about specific topics, only answer within the context of retrieved documents. All that is done with prompt engineering. But on the other hand, it's sometimes a bit exaggerated, where people treat it like magic and as an insanely hard skill, which I think it's not. But yes, it's very important to write good prompts for your system and test them well. So for me, prompt engineering is an A tier technique. The next technique we're going to have a look at is rephrasing. So rephrasing a user query based on the history of a conversation is absolutely crucial. Let's say a user has a question. The question gets embedded and you retrieved the most similar documents. And then the next user query might be something like, again, please. So making a follow-up question will retrieve the completely wrong documents to answer a question. And this is why you take the complete history, take a look at the newest question, and rephrase the newest question based on the history to be able to actually retrieve documents. So it's hard to put it somewhere. You 100% need it in a chatbot with REC, but without REC, you don't need it at all. So in my opinion, it either belongs in B tier or C tier, but since we focus on REC, I will put it in B tier. Okay, now let's have a look at re-ranking. For re-ranking, you use a special re-ranking model, which is also known as a cross-encoder model. That is a type of model that given a query and a document pair will output a similarity score to display how well a document is suited to answer a question. But wait, we already got a similarity score with embeddings or not. Yes, but embedding models compress the complete meaning of text into a vector space, which means we lose a lot of information. With re-rankers, we pass one document and one query to the model and get a score, so we don't lose that information. 
the results are more accurate. Let's say we've got 25 documents from the vector store. We pass them and then re-rank them and pass the top 10 to the model. I would say that it's an okayish approach. You still don't know if you need 10 documents, 8 documents, 5 documents. So again, it's all relative. In my opinion, re-ranking is often overhyped, so I would put it in C tier. A, in my opinion, better approach is LLM-based document compression. The approach is actually quite simple. You ask an LLM to evaluate a document and the question if it's suited to answer the question or not, and the model should return a true or false. If the LLM evaluates it as false, you drop the document from the documents list. So in my opinion, that's a great approach, but not A or S tier, because modern models can work pretty well with noise, but still it's quite useful, so I would put it in B tier. Okay, the next technique we're gonna have a look at is agentic rack. So what is an agent in comparison to a normal rack pipeline? The only difference is that an agent is cyclic, so it can run in a loop. Agents allow for techniques like self-reflection or hierarchical teams and so on. In my opinion, agents are great, but they can be quite expensive and also slow. It's really hard to put them somewhere. In my opinion, they either belong in B or in C tier. But yeah, I would put it in B tier since I really like agentic approaches. Okay, the next technique we're gonna explore is Raptor for RAG. So Raptor is a specific variant of RAG that aims to improve a tree vlog augmented generation. So what's actually going on there? So you've got some raw data, the so-called leaf documents, and you embed every documents. But instead of just putting them into the vector store, you cluster them into multiple clusters and then create a summary of these clusters. And then again, you take that summary, embed the summaries, and again, cluster them. At the end, you end up with a single root document. So Raptor is a technique designed to preserve overarching content in a text by clustering and embedding information across multiple levels. So Raptor allows you to preserve the overall meaning of a text. Normally that gets lost in a rec process by splitting the documents. Okay, so where do we want to put Raptor? In my opinion, it's a really fancy and cool technique, but it's very hard to update documents. It's computationally expensive and hard to understand. So you should probably exactly know when to use it. In my opinion, it's a niche technique that belongs in D tier for most LLM developers. Okay, the next technique we're gonna have a look at is graph rack. Graph rack is like Raptor, quite a hyped technique, and it utilizes graph-based techniques in retrieval augmented generation to manage context and retrieval more efficiently. It's well suited if you've got documents with many relations, like persons or organizations. It makes it easier to retrieve documents that are related. But again, like in Raptor, it's also quite expensive, slow, and also makes it very hard to update documents. So again, like for Raptor, you should only use it if you know exactly when to use it. In my opinion, it's rarely useful, so I would put it in D tier, which doesn't mean that it's bad, but it's a very niche technique that you should only use if you know exactly when and why to use it. The next technique we're gonna have a look at is guardrails. Guardrails are mechanisms put in place to prevent the LLM from discussing sensitive topics or making security-related errors. These constraints are crucial for ensuring that the chatbot operates within safe and appropriate boundaries. You can only do so much with prompts and there are existing techniques like prompt injections to make your chatbot say stuff that you don't want it to. So guardrails are absolutely crucial for LLM-based applications and you can't just give your chatbot the freedom to talk about anything. So if you want to bring your application to production, then guardrails are an absolute must. For me, guardrails are an A-tier concept. The last concept that we have a look at is model fine-tuning. Model fine-tuning involves customizing a model to perform better in specific domains or tasks. So you continue to train the last nodes of a neural network with new data. In my opinion, it's often a very misunderstood concept. I heard and read something like this. Oh yeah, we just fine-tune a model with all our documents so the model knows about the information in the model. No, this is what RAG is for. Fine tuning should be used for the following, setting a style, tone or format, or any other qualitative aspect, improving the reliability at producing a desired output, correcting failures to complex prompts, handle edge cases in specific ways. And that's what fine tuning is for. 
In my opinion, fine tuning is great, but again, it's often misunderstood. For making a great chat application, you almost never need fine tuning. For me, fine tuning for a chatbot is absolute D tier. Okay, so that's our final tier list. As you can see, we've got five items in S and A tier. In S tier, we've got raw data and chat model. In A tier, we've got the document chunking, prompt engineering, and guardrails. Every other concept is below that. And I even put many hyped and popular techniques in only D tier. So I think the foundation has to be correct. So make sure that you've got great data, that you use a very modern chat model, that you create prompts that work, that you se secure your chatbot against attacks, and that you use great chunks for embeddings. Chunking is, in my opinion, even more important than the embedding model itself. Okay, so now it's your turn. What items would you put somewhere else and why? Please let me know that in the comments. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.